It's been a massive show of force against North Korea, but South Korea and the United States are preparing to wind down their largest air force exercise to date. The allies have spent the past few days going over various wartime scenarios, including targeting North Korea's key nuclear and missile facilities. Our Kim Hyun Bin for us this afternoon at the Defense Ministry. Rick saying that war on the Korean Peninsula may be inevitable. Now, these comments come after a U.S. supersonic bomber flew over South Korea yesterday in a show of force as part of that large week-long military exercise. More than 200 aircraft taking part, including American fighter jets. Now, South Korea's military says this is to demonstrate a capability to respond to any threat from the north. Now, meanwhile, Seoul and Washington have been conducting a massive air combat drill known as Vigilant Ace. The five-day exercise is the largest ever combined Air Force drill between the two allies, involving 230 warplanes and around 12,000 personnel. Two dozen U.S. self fighter jets took part in the drills, six of them F-22s, six of them F-35As, as well as a dozen F-35Bs, marking the first time the highly advanced jets have cruised the skies of uh, Korea at the same time. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is said to be the most afraid of stealth fighters as they can easily get past the regime's air defenses undetected. Other U.S. assets include two B-1B bombers and six Growler electronic warfare jets, as well as dozens of F-15s and F-16s. South Korea has deployed 90 fighter jets, including its F-15 and F-A-50 fighters. The U.S. also flew two B-1B supersonic bombers over Korea for two consecutive days on Wednesday and Thursday, carrying out bombing drills over the Yellow Sea near North Korea and China. It is unusual for the U.S. to send the bombers, stationed in Guam, for two days in a row. Their exercise was simulated to target key North Korean facilities, including nuclear and missile sites. Kim Hyun-bin. Reports were that these bombers were getting ready for some intense activity. Air Force right now is pushing back a little bit on that. The Defense One website had been reporting that the preparations were being made at a Louisiana air base to have nuclear armed B-52s uh, at readiness not seen since Cold War days. Fox News is now being told that while preparations are being made at that base, right now there are no plans to go on that alert status. The Air Force is saying, however, that it must be ready to provide any options if directions are being put by the commanders, especially in this heightened atmosphere with North Korea. I would say, Sanja, that if we see preparations being made at the Guam air base on that Pacific Island uh, U.S. territory, uh, that's when we should really take notice. That's where B-52s are probably in closest proximity to North Korea. And Greg, we understand Defense Secretary James Mattis is in the region? Absolutely, yeah. He's at a, a confab, a, a meeting with other defense ministers in the Philippines. Uh, there's a statement coming out of that uh, grouping of officials from the Southeast Asian nations saying that uh, there should be grave concern about North Korea's nuclear and missile programs. Mattis will go on to South Korea and elsewhere. Remember, next month we'll see President Trump in the region, and certainly North Korea will be top of the agenda. Of course, as you can imagine, Sandra, the regime of Kim Jong-un not keeping quiet during these last couple of days with a lot of chatter going on about this uh, crisis. The state news agency today saying that President Trump is a hooligan and a lunatic and that he is overheated with war fever. A lot of hot words on both sides. North Korea possibly making new preparations for war by simulating attack responses. State media in North Korea reporting that citizens are having rare blackout exercises and mass evacuation drills. Meanwhile, the U.S. flew, flew a nuclear-capable B-2 stealth bomber over the Pacific this weekend in that region, just days ahead of the president's visit to Asia. ...menacing and accelerating missile program. A U.S. Air Force official tells us it's called CHAMP, a high-powered microwave system that can be delivered on an air-launched cruise missile deployed from an American bomber. Experts say it can jam missiles before they launch or while they're in flight. And in the standoff with North Korea, it's a game-changer.
Though we can't show actual images of the CHAMP or Counter Electronics High Powered Microwave Advanced Missile Project, this animation shows a simulated weapon flying over selected targets, hitting them with high power radio wave bursts and defeating their electrical and data systems without causing injury or collateral damage. But it was no simulation Tuesday over the Utah Test and Training Range, where Boeing and the U.S. Air Force Research Laboratories Directed Energy Directorate successfully flew the first fully operational CHAMP weapon. We hit every target we wanted to, we prosecuted everyone. Today we made science fiction science fact. This video recorded during an earlier test shows what CHAMP is capable of. Watch the computer screens in this office as the directed energy hits the building. While the computers were knocked out, there is no structural damage. Fade to black. When that computer went out, uh, when we fired, it actually took out the cameras as well. We took out everything on that. It was fantastic. It would be very useful in the Korean theater because it wouldn't require the presence of significant numbers of ground forces, it wouldn't require special operations forces, and it wouldn't require kinetic bombing attacks. So in essence, what can happen is an attack can occur and not a single person on the enemy side would lose a life. This declassified animation from the U.S. military shows how the CHAMP system would work. A bomber deploys a cruise missile. It would fly into enemy airspace at low altitude and send out strong pulses of electromagnetic energy. Officials say the enemy's electronic command and control systems would be jammed. Then, analysts say, the missile it's deployed on could be splashed down at sea. In one test of the CHAMP system, this was the result, a bank of computers being disabled simultaneously. This is kind of like uh, putting in a piece of metal into either a microwave or some other high frequency area where you're blasting it with a lot of radiation and you watch what happens to it. It's like, in essence, magnesium being set on fire. Officials caution, CHAMP is still in the research phase and not yet operational. While it could be effective in preempting North Korean missile launches, skeptics say it has potentially dangerous drawbacks. A non-lethal weapon that can defeat targets without collateral damage is an idea that's been portrayed in television and film for decades. But this, says AFRL champ lead test engineer Peter Finlay, is no movie. We're not quite up to the place where the Star Trek and Star Wars movies are, but this is definitely an advancement in technology to be able to give us an opportunity to do things that we couldn't do before. James Dodd, vice president of Advanced Boeing Military Aircraft, says his team is focused on developing the innovation to protect U.S. troops. We know this has some capabilities and some impact. And so uh, we're really trying to engage the customer and see if there's a way that we could actually get this fielded and implemented sooner than later. After its first flight, the CHAMP missile flew to an undisclosed location on the test range and the flight was intentionally terminated. Boeing and AFRL teams are now analyzing the data and telemetry from this flight, which not only made history, but stands to change it as well. The weapon, which is still under development, could be put on a cruise missile and shot at an enemy country from a B-52 bomber. designed to use microwaves to target enemy military facilities and destroy electronic systems, like computers, that control their missiles. The weapon itself won't damage the buildings or cause casualties. The weapon, which has the gloriously military-style name of Counter Electronics High Power Microwave, or CHAMP, isn't quite ready for action, but it could be soon. Two unnamed Air Force officials said that the weapon could be ready for use in just a few days. Well, think about like when you put a uh, something in your microwave that uh, actually has some metal on it. You know how badly that can go. Imagine directing those microwaves at someone's electronics. This technology absolutely works. Mary Lou Robinson is chief of high power electromagnetics at the Air Force Research Laboratory in New Mexico. She supervised a series of tests. It did exactly what we predicted it was going to do, and that was a huge success for us. This entire system is a conventional air-launched cruise missile, or a CALCUM. Uh, this particular variant has on it a high-power microwave payload system. So in the back, you have the engine. So the air intake comes in here, and the air is jetted out the back 
The engine is used by our system to help replenish the batteries. The batteries are what actually charge our payload. We call the high power microwave system on here the payload. That payload portion extends from just in front of the engine block a pretty long way. We have an antenna that radiates out to get our energy out into the atmosphere. You have a, a Mark's bank. It's a power conditioning system. We can't just take energy, electricity, out of the wall and have our source work. It has to be conditioned. It has to be in the right form to make that source work. So we have a whole bank in here that makes that happen. And up front is more uh, systems that are indigenous to the calcum itself. So our portion is kind of the middle section of this missile body. General David Deptuler, who ran the air wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, calls the weapon an excellent one, as to four other current military officials we spoke with. Command and control centers are filled with electronic infrastructure, which is highly vulnerable to high-powered microwaves. We asked General Deptula if the weapon could disable a ballistic missile on a North Korean launch pad. Uh, quite possibly, yes. So if it's so good, why isn't it out there? What's the holdup? The challenges are less technical and more mental. The tendency within the Pentagon is oftentimes to continue to try and perfect something. Uh, my tendency is to say, hey, we've got some things that really work. Let's take those things and put them into the hands of our men and women in uniform. Although one serious concern is that the cruise missile carrying the weapon would have to fly relatively close to the target inside North Korea, which could be seen as an act of war.